Welcome everyone to one, two, one, catch a turtle. What are we doing today? Check the goals of the classroom. I think in this unit one, two stuff, we do a lot more interactive game type things. So, um, like we're last in one, one, we're just drawing pictures. Maybe they move. There's going to be a lot more interactivity in here. So you're going to learn some new commands. The goals here. Use procedural abstraction to make a moving shape on string. Jump to random locations. You're going to learn how to do random stuff. So this is like a big part of games. And even some of your projects last time, you were asking like, how do I make it shoot out random fireworks? And we kind of faked it in certain ways. But um, if you knew how to use the random command, you could have actually made it random. So that's going to be neat. Event-driven programming. Oh, calling procedures, you'll see what that means. And new methods such as on click. Yep, we're gonna learn how to use click. So it does things on click. So reading through this. When writing long programs, so imagine this. You write a long program. Programmers break down the larger program into smaller separate subprogram called modulos. Modules. Modular code is a group of code that includes the necessary code to execute a specific functionality. So if you when your programs get bigger, like maybe some of your projects from the last lesson, they get, it's kind of hard to keep track of everything. So you get like hundreds of lines of code, right? I can even pull out some of my, maybe some of the projects I did. Like, so we, we have to come up with different ways to like kind of control that stuff. So the way we do this, uh, I'm closing all this. I don't need that. So the way we do this is kind of break that code up into different chunks. And this helps us structure things easier, maybe easier to find stuff. It's easier to reuse code. Always allows programs to reuse functionality. So imagine if you have a part of your code that you use at the beginning, but you also, you know, like, you know, we had like that for loop. We said, hey, if you're repeating this part, just use a for loop to just, or, or a while loop with count to repeat it a certain number of times. Now, but that worked if like the, you were reading, repeating the code like right next to each other. But imagine you'd like use that code at the beginning and the middle and the end of your program. Well, it's annoying to always have to copy and paste that code every time because the annoying part becomes, what if I want to change that code? Well, then I have to change it in all three sections. What if I forget to change it in all three sections or I don't change it the same way? And then, you know, what if you're using it like 10 times in a code in your program? You don't want to have to go to 10 different places to look for your code. You want to be able to like go to one place and change it, and then it changes at all the other places. So that's where functions and some of this modularity will come in. So in Python, code is modularized by creating functions. So functions sets a code that perform an action. So basically it's a chunk of code that I can just use, I can easily use from one place to the other. You'll, you'll see what this looks like. Functions, it's kind of like functions in math, in a way. You know, you have your, you have your functions, your f of x equals whatever, and then you plug in a variable and it outputs something. In some ways, you can see it as that too. And like how you can use that function and put in different values for x, you can use these functions to put in different values for your variables as well. So one common type of abstraction is procedural abstraction. It provides a name for a process. You know, they don't really, okay, we didn't really explain abstraction. We use this word abstraction. What does that mean? Okay, think of it this way. You know, your car, you hit the gas pedal, it goes. You don't need to know what it works, how it works underneath the hood to be able to drive a car. You hit gas, it goes forward. Abstraction is the same idea. Sometimes in programming, we want to hide the details. So you, so, so it's like easier to read something, easier to understand. We can abstract those details away. You don't need to learn how to build a car engine to drive a car. So the idea is that we can make these modules that abstract some of the details away. So we don't need to understand how it goes whenever we use it every time. So you'll see what it looks like. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Decomposition. Oh, they're using a lot of big words here. Program decompositions when the programmer breaks down parts of the code. I'm not liking this. I'm sure if you're listening right now, you're going blah, 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 skip, skip. When do we start the lesson? We're going to come back to these later. If I sit there and talk, it ain't going to work. 
Uh, decomposing is important. Simple game where you must catch as many falling fruits as possible for a timer runs out. Has many different functions to represent major actions throughout the game. Okay, so the idea is that when you're trying to create something, decomposition is like you want to like break it up into chunks. And I think we kind of did that in the last project. We said, hey, I like decomposition is like or organizing into smaller parts. We did that in the last thing. You have to you have to like not just make the programming code, not just program the thing, but like break it up so it's easier for you to to follow some process, follow some steps to make what you want. You do this when you write essays. You have to do your drafts and you you write you write out a plan of action of what you're doing, right? I don't know if they call them. But and whenever you're taking on a big task, it's very it's it's a very good practice to break it up into smaller tasks. You're an ASB. You want to plan for prom. You don't say, "Oh, let's just do prom." You have multiple committees. You got to advertise. You got to decorate. You got to find the venue. You have multiple people working on multiple tasks. It's the same idea, but in programming form. Okay, so syntax. Okay, so one big way we do this is with functions. We, we are going to make those different chunks called functions. And what do they look like? This does something weird's happening right here. That's not what it's supposed to look like at all. Let it load up again. Okay, so here's what it looks like, folks. A function, and this is what we're going to put in. You have to do def and then function name, parentheses, colon, and then stuff in here. So very similar to format you've seen in foreign while loops. But let's define a few things. So def means this says, hey, we are creating a new function. We're defining the function right here. And then we have to name the function. So it should be all one string. You want to have it multiple words in there. You have to use the underscore or some other method. Yeah, and then your header, you know, you have to open close parenthesis and you have to have the colon. And then everything that you, okay, so colon, yep. Then you indent it. And then everything in there, this can be multiple lines is inside that function. And the way you run the function is you're, you call the function is by typing function name, open, close parenthesis. Now, I'm throwing way too much at you right now, but we'll, we'll talk about you can have arguments or variables inside the function. And, but, well, let's, let's not overwhelm you. So I'm gonna put this in my notes. Uh, functions, let's make that nice and big. So we can go, are we gonna do this? I kind of like how, I kind of like how PLTW just does that. So I'm gonna just snip it. I don't wanna try to type that because the, the font's not gonna look right. It's like doing that. So, oh, look at that. See, it just kind of, I like that right there. Oh, not like that. I like what they do there. Okay, so that'd be a good practice. Let's do another screenshot from this. Okay, so. And then I want to say. And then we're going to call a function too. Let's, let's do this. Maybe. Maybe that'll help me remind how to do stuff. Call a function. I'll say to, to call a function, I'll use the real words, call a function. And then actually I want to have the arguments too. And let's do it this way. Okay. And then, you know what I should have? I should have this in there too. Maybe I make those. I'm going to do this in two sections. Okay, so when we're doing it with the parameters, I'm going to make this functions. We're going to make this nice and big. 
And then maybe I highlight it. Functions. And what is the functions? Functions. I'm going to say it in my words. So functions. Let us create a chunk of code that we can use any in our code is great if we want to use chunk multiple times. So there, I'm going to say that. That's kind of a use for it. Maybe I can put more in there. All right. I'll put some need to put def. Okay, I don't want to put this. Um, you need to define the function at the top of your code. You can call the function anywhere below you define it. All right, something like that. And okay, so one thing in functions, you can do this. And then also you're gonna wanna know that, hey, I got these parameters, right? Uh, you can use, I'm gonna say functions can be created with parameters. And, oh, come on. Oh no. Parameters are variables. They're kind of like, are like variables, but you like bring them into the code. All right. So we're gonna leave it like that. We'll get some examples. Okay, now one thing, sometimes we call functions in Python, we call it procedures. All right, so I want to put a note here is functions in Python are called procedures. The different programming languages might have different names for it. Met is it methods in Java? Methods would be in Java, right? They call it procedures here. Isn't that annoying? It's functions. I'm probably going to say function a lot. Uh, you guys should probably be paying attention to this or work on your own. Uh, All right. So let's look at this code. How might the function simple message and translate message be useful? So here's what's going on here. You define a function called simple message and that just prints, hi, have a good day. So whenever I use simple message, it's just going to do this. I also have translated message, right? And then translated message, you bring in this variable. Okay. So this is too many things at once. We're going to, we're going to skip all this. Come on. So let's just look at simple message. Let, you know what? Delete. I want to show you how this really works. So I define a function called simple message. And then I'm going to so run it right down here. So watch what happens. It says, hi, have a good day. So every time, so it's defining this and then I use it here once. Watch, if I get rid of this and I hit play, nothing's going to happen. It defined this, but it was never used. Now I use it once and it's going to display that message once. Now, what if I did it like two times? It's going to say it twice. So as many times as I use that, it's going to print that. I can define another count. So I'm going to go another 
message. And then I'm going to print, um, howdy. Why not? So let's say I have simple message and then another message. It should print one then the other. Howdy. I have a good day and then howdy. Or if I do this twice, we're going to do simple message once and howdy twice. So that's what's going on. Now, one thing to note here, folks, if you put those defines down here and you try calling up here, this ain't going to work. Yeah. Error. Because you have to define it before you use it. So whenever you define functions, they should be at the top of your code. And then like the main body of your code of whatever it's doing should be below. Okay. Now I'm going to reset this lab. They threw another thing on here. So this is translated message. And it comes in with a parameter and they call this language. So and it says, hey, if the language is English, do it this, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. So when I'm calling these functions, if I did translated message, and I do English, and the capitalization matters, it's going to say, hey, have a good day. What if I do a translated? And after that, I'm going to do French. And say, hey, have a good day and bon journey right down there because that's how you say that in French, bon journey. Now, what if I did a different message? Translated message. What's another language? I don't know. Canadian. Is that a language? Yeah, of course you can. So I said, that's going to give an error because that wasn't one of our choices. Oh, no, because I didn't spell that right. It'll actually do nothing because there was no option for that. What if I did nothing in here? If I don't put any language in there? It's actually going to give you an error message. It is expecting you to have something in there. So this is where the simple message didn't have anything, translated message has something in there, that parameter. The same thing like, so if I would have done simple message, this will work. But what if you tried simple message and then put English in there? I don't know if this is going to work. So those are a few things I wanted to show you right here. And maybe I did them outside of order, but there you go. How might these messages be useful? I'll leave it up to you. What I would say with these kind of things is like, what if you had to do this? You had a really long code, like it's hundreds of lines and you wanted to have these things, like you wanted to send out messages multiple times in the code. You don't want to have to write this every time. The idea is that, hey, I can just have this one line and put it anywhere in my code and I can just run it. All right, so I'm going to leave this up to you to do. Drag each item to its correct location. Try it out on your own. Moving on, though. Let's look at events. As a programmer, you need to think about the behavior that you want to program to do in response to events occurring during runtime. An event is a trigger. Okay, so like, you know, sometimes you hit play and your code just runs. Um, but sometimes you want it to behave differently when an event happens. Now, and they call this a trigger. Uh, maybe it's like when someone clicks on something. Someone types in a certain phrase or something like that. Or they hit a certain button on the keyboard. You hit space bar. You want them to jump or whatever. When you click on the turtle, maybe you want it to stop. I don't know. So those are different events. And things can happen. You can make your code do things based off those events. 
In code, you connect an event to a function. Oh, the event handling. Uh, there's way too many vocabulary words today. But okay, let's keep moving on. So, you know, you want something to happen. You click on it. What are some common events? Let's say button clicked. Yep. Oh, even maybe not happen. Like maybe your battery's running low or something. Or like the timer reaches zero if you have like a time is running out a clock. Right? Uh, something. Okay, whatever. So all those events, like we can make things happen. So in this activity, we'll develop a game that makes a turtle on the screen jump to a random location. The user is able to click on it in time. Clink is an event or a trigger that causes the turtle to jump to a new location. Well, that's cool. So we're going to make a game. All right. So here's the requirements. We're breaking this down. Makes a turtle on the screen jump to a random location if the person's able to click. The click should trigger the player's score to accumulate. So there's going to be like a score counter somewhere on the screen. The click should make that go up. The timer runs out. If the timer runs out, the turtle will disappear and the game will display a message. Game over. So you got to click fast enough. Okay. So hopefully this, this, hopefully this, let's go project lead the way. What are the different parts of the game? Okay. So when you're thinking about this thing. Pause, man. All right. Uh, identify the parts of the game. So the part's going to be the turtle. I would say you have to turtle. You have to have the score. You have to have like the area of the screen where this turtle runs around. And then I guess your mouse, you have to click. What do they say? Oh, okay. Turtle randomly moves. You have to click. Update the score. Oh, the timer. I forgot. Okay. Okay, so create a new code. Oh, geez, so I'm going to do it right here. Okay, I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to do it in this one to save my work. And replit. All right, so they give me this. So important statements, game, configuration, events. Familiarize yourself with the different sections of this template. So we have important import the statements. So you import whatever. Configure game. You start up the turtle. And then you do stuff and then, okay. You'll be adding code throughout this project. Add code under each of these sections is a common technique. Oh, I wonder if this happens over multiple sections. No, no, this is just, this. okay. So the, what are the sections? You import local import files. Like we'd import, you'll see. You configure the game, initialize the turtle objects where all the turtles game will be created. Game functions where it does stuff. So they're kind of like trying to break this up. Okay. All right. I'm just want to keep going through this. Add an import for turtle as you have done in previous activities under appropriate section import station statement. Okay. So you're like, you're like, what is that? Like I forget too. So I'm going to go back to like my old project. I haven't finished this yet. I'm terrible. So what you got to do at the start, remember we have to import this? Import turtle as turtle. Sure, I've done it this way. So, boom. Going to import that. In the game configuration section of your code, create variables for your shape's color, size, and shape, and set them to values of your choosing. Okay. Shapes color. In the example code, you will see throughout this activity, the color is pink, the size is two, and the shape is circle. So let's do it there. Game configuration section. Spot color. Spot shape. Equals circle, they said. I don't know if capitals are bad or not. Spot. What was the other one? Oh. Size. I don't like the underscore, so whenever I create it, in fact, I hate them so much. I'm going to do that. 
Okay, I'm calling it spot. Why not? I don't know. Okay, lesson one. Turtles can any shape. All right. Remember we had different shapes. Classic, triangle, square. I'm going to keep it a circle. Initialize turtles object section of your code. Create your turtle. Give your turtle a variable name. For example, if shape is a circle, you might call it spot. Okay. So you're like, how do I initialize the turtle? Remember, we had to do like this. Turtle dot turtle. Tur turtle dot turtle. So I'm going to call it spot because I'm just going to do what they say. All right. This is why I always have to go back to that code. Set the shapes into, okay, initialize this. The shape, shape size, and fill color of your shape using the variables. Okay. So what does that mean? Spot dot shape, spot shape size. We've learned all these before. So I can say spot dot shape, and then we can go spot shape. And then what are the other ones? Uh, shape size and fill color. So how do you do shape size? Is it actually shape size? Turtle size, that's what it's called. Uh-huh. That's why I like going back. Oh, stop opening that one. So spot dot turtle size. I'm going to make it spot size. And spot dot fill color is going to be spot color. Now you might be like, well, why do we do the variables here? And then just use them over here. Like, does that even make sense? Kind of weird, huh? I think they're trying to show the use of variables because maybe I need to use these again later in the code. And I want to save it. I could have just typed those directly into here. This is a good practice just in case, like, you want to save these to reuse later. Like, yeah, so it's a good practice. But I don't think it was necessary. But okay. Need help? Oh, look. Wait, shape size? It's called turtle size. Can you actually say shape size too? Maybe it does the same thing. Oh, they are the same thing. That's good to know. So you know what? I'm going to say that shape size. They do the same thing. Good to know. And I'm going to put a note. One, two, one. Okay. I'll put that note right there. Let's see. I, you know what? Maybe I just do one, two, one, four, shape. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to put those notes there. Uh -huh. In the main loop section of your code, create a turtle screen called WN and call the main loop method. Right? So, wait, you're like, what? How do I do this? You do it like we've done before. In the event section of your code. And then we go, and then we do... Oh, we just do these two lines. Remember, we do them at the very end. Do I understand how that? why we do that? Not really. That just keeps the screen on. Run your code and click on your shape. What do you observe? Really? There's nothing there. Oh, I spelled circle wrong. Oops. It does nothing when I click on it. 
Oh, we're missing the part where you click. And here it is, folks. In order to make something happen when you click, you'll have to use the shapes on click method. Ooh, we're going to learn a new, new thing on click. So it's going to be a new thing at the very bottom. Don't you hate when you get text about political ads? I need that over with. Oh, what's, what's this? I, I don't care. Why? So on click method parameters, remember they're called a procedure. Now I'm using the word method or procedure. It's a function, but it's like a kind of a built in one. On click F is used to handle the event when it clicks, it takes a function F as its parameter. F will define what happens when the turtles clicked. Okay. So you put a function inside of on click. So it says, when I click this, F will define what happens when the turtle's on click. F will send two values, the X and Y coordinates of the mouse and the turtle is clicked. Therefore, F must be defined with two parameters. Okay. So on click uses a function. Like whenever you click it, it'll run that. And the game function section of code, define a function called spot clicked that takes in parameters X and Y. So here's how we do this. We're going to go. Wait, it said game function section. We're going to define spot clicked with X and Y parameters. And stuff will happen inside of here. What? I don't know. Just going to put that for now. I'm calling it spot still. I'm going to test that this function will work before adding several lines of code. Add a print stamp. Sit. Okay. So sometimes we want to like test, see if it works. Right? Just make sure it, it runs. I don't know. Print. This is a test. You did spot clicked. So maybe I want to do, like testing it right there. So I just want to make sure it runs. Great, nothing happens right now, but that's fine. That's a good, that's a good practice. And add a print statement. Okay. Hey, oh, look, see all this I figured out myself? You just click the spoilers down here. On the event section of your code, before you call the main loop. Before you call the main loop, add the following line. Let's do this line. So we're gonna put that before you call main loop. I think it has to go here, right? Add the following line. When spot on click click, the turtle will automatically respond when you click. Okay, run the code and see what it does. Let's see if I put it in the right spot. Oh, look, if I click there, no, but if I, oh, that's cool. So if you click, so the way this just works, I, I didn't know. It just runs that function. What if I were to put it like right here instead? I'm curious if it wouldn't work. It does work. Okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, okay. Obviously if I put it up here, it shouldn't work because we haven't defined spot click yet. I'm just gonna see. Oh, it it it's already mad because I didn't define it. So it didn't need to be right there. As long as it's like it's a thing. So oh, that's cool. Well, I learned something today. And folks, it's noon, my time. We're gonna stop at 14. Part two's coming up.